Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, the Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we have a very special guest in light of the weather and the road conditions, our Highway Commissioner Greg Schnell. Greg, good to have you here. Thanks for having me. We're going to talk a little bit about the roles and responsibilities of the Highway Department. Greg's been Highway Commissioner for about 14 months. That's correct. And definitely hit the ground running. And Greg, please start by sharing a little bit about your role as Highway Commissioner. Well, as you said, uh, this is one of our most challenging times of the year as far as winter and, and uh, making sure that uh, everybody's got a, a safe way to get to work and, and an opportunity to get to work. Obviously, we depend greatly upon that commerce. And, the uh, position of highway commissioner is a lot of times challenging and most of the time rewarding. You get to see projects start to finish and get then be involved in a lot of different programs and and uh, get, meet a lot of special people in my in my, in my uh, position. And you came to this position with a real breadth of experience. You previously were in Manitowoc County for how many years? Seventeen. For seventeen years. Yes, I worked my way up through there and and uh, worked my way into a management position and um, was fortunate enough to get hired on here and I really like being here. Now, many of our viewer, viewers might be thinking, well, Highway Department, how complicated is that? But there's really a lot going on depending on the season with the Highway Department. Please give a, a brief overview of what the Highway Department all entails. Well, we, uh, our Highway Department is very progressive in, in construction. We like to build roads and maintain and um, we own our own asphalt plant, our own crushing plant, so we produce and lay down our own um, asphalt and aggregate. Um, we construct, like I said, so a lot of our planning goes, it's three to five years out as far as our larger construction projects and some of the funding that goes along with it, plus the seasonal things that go along with it and the maintenance to um, mow the grass and control the vegetation and uh, uh, patch and shoulder, all those stuff that goes into it, so it's just a you're on a continuous cycle year to year it's the same things but sometimes it's different roles that you go into and at this time most of the emphasis is keeping the roads ice free and snow free that's correct and we've been challenged so far not challenged so much but we're, we're putting our equipment to use which we're not normally used to in december it uh, it seems to be it has been a slow month for the last couple of years and now we're uh, bearing its wrath early so we're uh, taking care of business and I think so far it's it's panned out pretty well for us. How many employees do you have and and what's the general components of the department? We have 117 employees currently. Um, 103 of those are union employees which have job classifications that they perform. We have um, six outlying shed uh, district supervisors and they may, they keep uh, control of the individuals or the employees that are in that area and, and send them out to their work functions. We have seven staff in the office that are arranged from um, uh, patrol superintendents from an engineer to uh, administrative assistant and bookkeepers. And as you said right now folks are real busy keeping the the roads clear when we say that what are we talking about how many roads do you have to uh, maintain throughout the year? Sheboygan County is probably one of the largest in the states as far as how many miles of road it maintains. We have 100 and uh, 450 miles, I'm sorry, of uh, lane miles of road. Uh, we also maintain 170 miles of state road and 465 miles of town road. So we do have a, a lot of responsibility as far as what we have to maintain and keep clear. Let's repeat that one for our viewers. So there's a total of 450 county miles county miles yep. in addition to the 450 county miles you also maintain say that again please 170 miles of state road and 465 miles of township road that's a lot of road yes it is our responsibilities our priorities are we ma uh, maintain the state county townships and then we go into some of the villages that we also take care of so um, we want to try to make sure that the main connectors the uh, larger volume uh, ADTs, the uh, average daily traffic is taken care of and from there we spread out and take care of the rest of the stuff. So if you interact with someone who has absolutely no feel for the highway department, in a snapshot what would you describe as the primary roles and responsibilities of the department? Our primary roles and responsibilities would, would consist of the maintenance, making sure that we're providing that, that safe 
and reliable transportation that people need to get to work. We want to make sure that um, we don't have uh, potholes that are causing damages or could cause accidents. We want to make sure that the roads are free of snow and ice so that obviously we all can get to work and, and generate uh, dollars and make sure that the goods and services are delivered on time so that we all have something to do when we get to work. It's not just the, uh, the commuters that have to get to work, get to school and get their social activities. We need to get uh, commerce in and out in order to keep everybody busy, especially in this in one of our in, the, in this county we're very uh, factory orientated that de depend upon goods and services coming from without. And I, before I turn it over to Chairman Gehring, I know that your department um, is overseen by the Transportation Committee, and That's the correct. Transportation Committee oversees the the airport that department. And you and Chuck Mayer have an excellent working relation and. From time to time, your crew is working out at the airport. How's that work? We um, Chuck works with the uh, the Federal Bureau of Aeronautics in order to expand our airport, and has been very progressive in doing that over the last many years um, with the airport expansion. And our our crews are called on, and we can um, we are asked to provide estimates for cost, and we can go out there and essentially help Chuck build and keep our services going along with that help and it's it's paid for uh, partially by the federal government so it's it's a win-win for everybody helps us get our airport to the size we'd like it to be to keep it growing and, and, and helping the industry that we that we're supporting here excellent thank you Greg Greg as you know in my other capacity I'm also a town chairman I know that the highway department works very closely with municipalities villages and the state how do you coordinate all of those projects it's uh, well, first of all, we have good staff. Uh, we have people that are, are willing to step forth and, and do what it takes to get the job done. It, that's what needs to get done at the, at the time. Um, we, uh, at every different level, we, we have people that town chairmen such as yourself can contact and, and get the job done. If, the, if it's not getting done, they can contact me and we'll make sure they get that done. Um, the coordination level is everybody knows what seasons we always come into and, and we go full circle. So if, depending upon the service, if it's snow removal, we know that this is the winter season, we're going to take care of business. Summer season, uh, when we do our paving and, and we do those types of needs or have those types of things done, contact us, we'll get it taken care of. The communication is the top thing. It's, the, it's key to, to making your township be progressive and, and, and stick with the, the plan that you have in place and, and us communicating with the people that supply us with the, the building needs that we have and, and to get the job taken care of. Okay, I firmly believe that there's a benefit for a, a township, a village to contract with the county to do their work. Can you tell our viewers what those benefits might be? Well, if you look at the, um, as I mentioned earlier, we have six different sheds that are strategically placed throughout the county. And from those sheds, we can supply different services to the area, the township, the village that's in that area, and, and, and get the service taken care of. Um, in saying that, that way the village, the township, doesn't have to have a building to maintain their equipment, a salt shed to, to, to store their salt, uh, even the equipment or the employee, if that's the direction they take, that they wouldn't have to pay the benefits and the wages for. They can contract us. Um, we provide the service. Um, and we feel we provide it in an efficient manner that it takes care of everybody's needs and you don't have to be maintaining that equipment day after day. You get a rental rate charged to you that we get established by the state and we pass that on. Okay. Uh, what is your total budget for your department and what part of that budget would be accounted for with the winter snow plowing and salting and those activities? Our budget um, for 2007 is uh, 15 almost sixteen million dollars um, anywhere between one million to one point five is normally what we'd spend on, a, on an average winter uh, this year we're up a little bit if we all can read back up and remember January February and March of last year um, in the latter part of that uh, those months we've got, gotten hit really hard with the heavy wet snow the stuff that's mm -hmm. hard to get rid of and it causes more uh, heartache and headache and sometimes it, it takes more equipment to get that off the road. Those dollars added up. This year we're a little bit higher than what we normally would like to be and now December is definitely not helping mm -hmm. the cause. So, okay. What is the variety of equipment we have out there to attack the snow and what would be the cost to handle the average two-inch snowfall like we had a couple days ago? 
We, uh, in that type of event, we would send out about 40 snow plows. And again, they're taking care of the state, the county, and the townships. So those are, and once they, once they complete their state routes and their, their county routes, they're gonna go and insist in helping the town roads and, and get that stuff taken care of so everybody can get done at an at approximate time or the same time. Um, the, uh, the average cost, you know, it can vary depending upon the timing. If it's a weekend, obviously it's going to be, the removal is going to be done on the weekend. Um, but if it's during the week, you could, you know, it would generate anywhere between twenty to $50,000. And all, obviously there's a lot of other things that come into play. If you're going to get wind and drifting and all that stuff, sometimes after the storm is where the cost comes in when you have to try to get pushed that stuff back. And, and it's a constant maintenance going back to that same drift because it's out into the middle of the road and you can't control it anymore because, you know, it's not getting caught up on anything. So it's kind of a loaded question. Mm -hmm. I hope I answered your question. Sure. Uh, kind of off the skiff, do we still have a couple of Oshkoshes and snow blowers? Should it really get bad? <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, we did get rid of some of the Oshkosh trucks. Uh, we had um, 20 of them and we're down to uh, 12. And uh, we have them placed at our outlying district sheds so that we can still support. There are some areas in the county that uh, the roads and, and ditches won't take the capacity of snow that we'd like to. And there's a potential that they could get blocked at some time, and those are the pieces of equipment we're going to need to open that up. So we felt comfortable keeping two at each outlying, each outlying shed to uh, provide that service. Mm -hmm. And then is there new technology that the highway department is using to deal with the weather? We, uh, the state has provided us with a, a contracted service that uh, they notify us two hours prior to an event. And they put a classification on that if it's got 30% probability of precipitation, that could affect pavements, they're gonna call our supervisor on call to put them on alert that, you know, you have this coming. And um, it could be freezing rain or it could change, change over at this time. So we have a person that we can contact, basically it's a meteorologist that's gonna give us the information we need as far as pavement temperatures, what the wind direction is gonna be, what the wind is gonna be. That's a, a, a great tool. We also, in our supervisor's trucks, um, the state has provided us with um, surface temperature gauges mm. so that um, when our guys are out there and uh, depending upon what the, the uh, pavement temperature is, can gauge how much salt we use. If the pavement temperature is up a little bit, it's going to take a little less salt to get the ice and snow off, whereas if it's too cold or, or cold, we're going to have to put down more salt. So those are just a few of the things that we use. and then. You know, to gauge how much snow we're going to get uh, throughout the year, we usually go out to the marsh and check how high the muskrat rush, uh, houses are to see and gauge the, the depth of snow. So. <laughs> Have the meteorologists been pretty accurate if they say it's going to start snowing at 3.30 in the southern part of the county? Will it happen then? Or? It, you know, that's just like watching the news. You know, they're all looking <laughs> at the same radars. Uh, some have a different take on it. But uh, our experience is, is that... Um, and what they have told us is very difficult to, uh, pro, uh, to, to uh, predict the late fall, early winter weather because mm -hmm. of the jet streams and all that stuff. Once they get through January, they can kind of predict how things are going to go. But for the most part, sometimes we use the old adage, wait until it hits the ground mm -hmm. and we'll tell you what we're mm -hmm. going to get. Okay. Then do you have any recommendations for our drivers out there, how they can uh, be of assistance when they come up to a snowplow? Or the best thing is is to stay back. Keep your distance. Obviously, if you can't see the operator when he's sitting there and as he's looking in his mirror, he can't see you. And uh, you know, give us time. We'll get the we'll get to you to where you want to be. You might get there a little later, but we're going to get you to where you want to be. So give us some time and some space. And then, are there any resources that I could call if I wondered how the road conditions were in Sheboygan County or Manitowoc County? One eight hundred Road Wis would be the overall picture of Wisconsin. You can, during business hours, which are 7 to 3.30 during the winter at the highway department between Monday and Friday, you can call us and we'll provide the information as well as we can as far as road conditions. And we get a lot of calls for I-43 um, and State Highway 23 to, to see, even if they want to see if our plows are out there. And um, our services that we provide for, for the winter maintenance, uh, uh, during the week we have pretty much 24-hour coverage, although in the evenings it's limited to only two people that are on. They're taking care of the hot spots or just monitoring what's going on. I mean, the hot spots is if we got icy bridges and stuff like that that they can take care of. But typically, um, if we had snow overnight, most of our guys would be in by 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning so we can make a complete round on all of our county and state roads by 7 and then we start branching out from there. 
Well, I'm glad you're in Sheboygan County. You came to us from Manitowoc County. You're doing a great job. I Thank appreciate you, that. Thank you, Bill. And I'm glad to hear that you're checking out the muskrat <laughs> houses when you want to know how deep the snow is going to be. I figured you'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that one for some time. What can we expect based on that? Uh, I haven't uh, physically looked myself. Personally, I haven't taken a look. <laughs> I may have to do that, yeah. <laughs> have to get Ed Harvey out That's there. That's right, exactly. Survey and have him take a look. Well, uh, speaking of, uh, you know, being relatively new to us, 14 months out, the time's flown, but um, you, you followed the, the shoes of uh, Roger Lanning, who was a well-respected highway commissioner for a long time for Sheboygan County, did a great job, and, and you had big shoes to fill, as you know, and as Chairman Gearing mentioned, you know, you've made good things happen in your short tenure. You've already shown a real command of the, of the area and the operation. And just in general, what are your impressions of the Sheboygan County Highway Department? I love the growth. Um, there's there's um, a lot of potential. There's building going on. There's you know uh, we have we have great support from the county board and yourself, Adam, and transportation committee. It's 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 great to be involved. Um, our our department, like I said earlier, is very proactive in construction. I, I, I like that. That's a great thing. Um, we have a lot of stuff to offer, and there's a lot of stuff in Sheboygan that Sheboygan has to offer in Sheboygan County in general, and and it's it's a great place to to. Um, even raise my kids. We're here now. We moved here, and um, it's it's been nice. And it's a, you guys have welcomed me very well, and I appreciate that very much. With the um, back to the the conditions that people are dealing with today, the winter conditions. You know, I got up and drove to work from the town of Sh town of Plymouth this morning, and uh, was anticipating things were going to be a little slick out there with the the freezing that occurred last night and that those wet roads were going to freeze and that I might have to take it a little slower this morning. And I was pleasantly surprised that the roads were in good shape, particularly Highway 23 coming all the way into Sheboygan. We and know that's your route, so we kind <laughs> you, of You make sure that gets covered, right? <laughs> what, what's to give our viewers a, a feel for just what happens? Your staff are out there, what, 5 a.m. already? Aren't they helping with the commute? Or what's the general game plan in that day to make sure that commute is as safe as possible? We, uh, well again, we go back to the monitoring of the weather, uh, making sure we know what's coming the night before and um, obviously in the off hours on the weekends when we're not providing that 24 hour coverage, um, the sheriff's department is our eyes and ears. They're going to let us know, call our supervisor on call and say, hey, you know, we have some conditions out there that, that, that need to be taken care of. So in that respect, our supervisor are going to check that out and see what size of, of crew is going to be needed to take care of what we have going on. Um, so we work hand in hand with the sheriff's department in order to make some of those calls and, and to make sure that we're covering and, and providing that safe and, and way into work or way to the social event. Um, like I said, throughout the week we have people on 24 hours. There's a little lapse of uh, the second shift um, from the first shift and a little lapse from second into third, but we're, we pretty much got it all covered and, and if we need more at night, we bring in more resources. So literally people are plowing all night long and first thing in the morning. Yep, and in the off, when, when there's not snow to be removed, we have plenty of equipment to maintain. There's 600 pieces of equipment at our department that you know need something done to them. So we, um, we have, there's plenty of things to do. As you look at the last year and um, the initiatives, the projects, the different things you've been involved in, give our viewers a flavor for that. What have been some of the major projects that the highway department was involved with? We, um, we had finished up the, um, there was County Trunk I and a Village of Adel, which is um, um, a section of road that turned into just a, a, a real nice piece of highway now. There's retaining walls, new sidewalk, new curb and gutter. It was a joint effort between us and the village. We reconstructed County Trunk PP between Willow Road and uh, 57, joint project between us and the City of Plymouth. We uh, made the pavement wider so that it'll accommodate bike traffic in the future for their industrial park. Um, and then one of the major ones that we just finished up at the last part of the year, here's the Inner Urban Trail, the connection between Oostburg and Cedar Grove, which is, has been utilized a lot by uh, even Adam and myself. So. <laughs> Greg and I had a chance to bike that, and it wasn't a pretty picture, but we, we certainly uh, enjoyed that, about a three-mile stretch. Of, yes, yeah. It's just beautiful if you haven't gotten out to the inner urban trail, again, between Oostburg and Cedar Grove, a beautiful stretch of non-motorized 
and that piece goes all the way through um, Milwaukee and all the way down. The interurban trail is a, is, a, is a long piece, and it starts here in Sheboygan, and we hope to, uh, in the future, continue that through Sheboygan. So. You gave a nice overview of the areas your department's involved with, but one you didn't touch on until just now is you personally have been involved with the, um, the non-motorized transportation program for Sheboygan County and, and the opportunity to improve some of our networks throughout the county. Um, if I recall correctly, we're going to have some improvements made to the Old Plank Trail along um, 23 here next year, isn't it? That That's right? correct. There's a section that um, had not been rebuilt or hasn't been built to the standards that uh, the section from County Trunk M to the west, yeah, to the west was. And um, there's an opportunity here with, there's a major gas line that'll be running across Sheboygan County and they're going to utilize some of that right of way which in turn doesn't sound good, but they're going to wreck some of the trail that's currently there. So we're going to get that built up to standards and hopefully uh, continue to build all the way out to County Trunk M in the future with some of that non-motorized uh, money. We also have some non-motorized money going to uh, extending pay of shoulders on County Trunk A and M. And uh, we applied for some for County Trunk O uh, in connection with our construction project that's going to take us from Taylor uh, drive and eventually all the way out to 32. So um, it's going to do a lot of good things. It's just uh, some of it's a little challenging at this early start of it, but there's there is no boilerplate set in stone. We're a pilot program and, and there's a lot of things that we're all learning as we as we progress through the process. Another activity that folks have been keeping their eyes on locally is just what's happening with Highway 23 and the kind of the ongoing saga of when it's going to become a four lane and will it be 2010 or 12 or 14 and there's been some discussions amongst legislators uh, locally about that but uh, where the rubber hits the road is the work that you and your staff do and I know that you've already been doing some work to prepare for that. I think some people are of the impression well nothing's really happened yet and things won't get rolling until after 2010 but what are some of the activities already in play to, to expand 23 from a two lane to a four lane? There's um their real estate division at the DOT has been progressively buying properties and trying to buy the right of way that's going to be in need for expanding that to a four lane. Um, currently, our department is is uh, demoing demolition on a barn that's on the uh, right on the uh, Fond du Lac Sheboygan County line. Um, that was a farmette that was bought up by the state in order to enhance the road. So there is progression being made, and I think it's going to happen. It's just that we have to, you know, cut through some of the the red tape and get to the get to the construction. What are some of the major projects you you have coming up in 2008? 2008 is going to be a tremendously busy year for our department. We, um, through the help of yourself and the finance, we're going to be doing some creative accounting for the um, construction wise. We're going to be building County Trunk V, which is two and a half miles of, uh, of rural road. Uh, we're building three quarters of a mile of County Trunk O from Taylor to I-43. Plus, with freeing up some money and doing some different things in, in our capital projects, we're going to be paving about 25 to 30 miles of road. That's going to be a, a very aggressive year, and, and it's um, we have also some uh, a, a road to relocate at the airport. So lots of construction next year. We're looking forward to it, and, and we're just in the process now of, of putting together our schedule just so that we have everything lined up so we can continue the flow. And none of that gets done if the county board doesn't appropriate the dollars you need to, to make it happen. And as you said, um, the, the budget for the highway department looks pretty good for 08, and in part because of the sale of Sunny Ridge and some other things that allowed the county board to move more resources to, to departments that the last few years have really had to tighten their belt more and more. And you touched on an area with the overlay. I recall a report that your staff prepared couple of years ago now where we weren't really keeping up with some of those maintenance or overlay responsibilities. We're hoping to give that a little kick here in 08 as you just touched on. But what about the future? How do you see the cost of, of fuel and oil impacting your budget and your ability to, to keep up with this work? Well, it, it's a stretch. It's, it's going to be a challenge, and, and we're not alone. Everybody's faced with the same things. And obviously, if, if oil is going up on the asphalt, then it's going up for all of us to heat our homes and to drive our vehicles. And um, what it does is it, it challenges us to uh, find other alternatives or do different things in order to 
to stretch that dollar, and, and we're working at those. We're, you know, there's there's all our alternatives as far as using different types of oil, like waste oil, in order to, to heat your asphalt plants so you don't have to depend upon all those other resources that you have to buy and import it from other countries. So there's there's ways that are getting around it, but it's going to take a lot of time and bureaucracy to get to that point. But I think in the future, there's going to be um, strides made in order to provide a, a cheaper alternative to what we're using now. Um, you know, in a sense, everything goes up. You know, your uh, cost of your equipment, if the fuel is higher, obviously that rental rate goes up and the oil price goes up. So you just don't get as much done for what you what you have to spend. And that's and that's a challenge for everybody. But I think we're, we're making the right steps in the right direction um, as long as we can keep on that pace. As certainly the three of us know, but some of our viewers may not be aware, the county board adopted a property tax levy reduction, which is the first one in 21 years. Even though they were able to provide for a property tax reduction overall, most uh, county departments, including the highway department, received at least a 3% increase, some a little bit more. But uh, what continues to be very challenging for us in the county is uh, when you have unfunded or underfunded state mandates, uh, many of which we're responsible for providing at the local level, and then you have the, the, the realities of fuel costs and oil costs going up, you know, a lot more than 2 3%, which is what most people would like, I think, the line held on with property sure. tax increases, it makes it difficult. And what we find at the county level is that uh, folks certainly want to see property tax relief or they want us to hold the line, but uh, they don't want to see their services reduced or we don't get too many suggestions on what areas not to plow or what programs to cut back on. So it, it continues to be a challenge. And, and I hope, Greg, you're going to be here for some time to help us work through that process. I'm a young guy. <laughs> I'm not going too far. I'm not going too far. So. Well, thank you for joining us this month, and I hope that you got a, a nice overview of the Highway Department and its programs and services. If you have questions or suggestions, please don't hesitate to contact Greg Schnell directly, our, our Highway Commissioner for Sheboygan County, or Chairman Bill Gearing, or myself. And we're also going into an election year. In April, we'll be looking at an election for the full county board. There are 34 county board supervisors. My bet is some of you out there may not know who your local elected county board supervisor is, but trust me, they're involved with making very important decisions about how your property taxes are spent. So if you don't know, please look into it and please get engaged in that process as we go forward. But uh, on behalf of Chairman Gearing and the Sheboygan County Board, thank you for joining us. Next month, Julie Glancy, our county clerk, is going to be here to talk a little bit about the upcoming election process and how that works, as well as some of the very important services she provides in the county clerk's office. So again, until then, on behalf of County Board Chairman Bill Gearing and the County Board, thanks for joining us.